Buenos dias, wherever you're at. Aloha. All right, this is Sarah from Japan. Welcome back to another prophetic read along. I just received another confirmation today. I believe, you know, um, I was praying this morning and um, then I opened up my Bible to where I left off. Um, I, I always pre read before I read, do the read alongs. And I was reading Lamentations 3, and it sounds a lot like. Um, what the Lord is trying to tell us right now in the midst of what's gone, you know, on in these past couple of days. Um, and what's been going on really for the last couple of years now. And it, I mean, there's an uptick of a lot of strange events, strange, very violent um, events. Um, the Denver, uh, not the Denver shooting, the Aurora shooting in Colorado. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> the Clackamas County Mall shooting in Oregon, which, you know, which really hit home for me because my siblings, a lot of my siblings live in Portland, Oregon. And um, now we have the problem with, <laughs> you know, um, the shooting in Connecticut and the stabbing in, in China. And people are going to say, oh, it's because of the guns, you know, we need to ban guns or, you know, we need to put strict, we have need to have stricter gun laws. But, you know, um, someone who is determined to carry out an evil deed, okay, whether they do it out of m mental illness, which I really don't believe too much in mental illness. I don't put too much stock in that and what man thinks. I really believe there's something called demon possession, okay? And um, I've seen it firsthand, but not killings, but I mean, I've seen demon possession firsthand. But uh, what I think this really is though, um, there's just too many things like the reading, I was watching the news report and first it was like, oh, there's two shooters or multiple shooters. And then it's like, oh, it was Ryan, Ryan, Lan whatever it is, I forget his name, last name. And then, and then it was, no, it's his brother, Adam, you know, and it was like, oh, no, the kindergarten class that he stormed into, his mom was teaching there. When she was found later, they found her dead at home. So the story keeps changing. A lot like it changed with the Aurora shootings. I was watching that live when that happened, when CNN was covering it. It was like 7.30 p.m. over here in Japan when that the breaking news came on. And I was watching it. And they were the report kept on changing. First they said multiple shooters. You know, there's two gunmen. You know, I saw that. I, I heard them say it. I saw them say it. And then, you know, it changed to one shooter. And, you know... And there was, I heard also like nine one. I I heard the nine one one, the nine one one calls and the Twitter things. I saw the Twitter things on there that said that there were canisters, gas canisters coming in from both sides of the theater. Okay. And so you know there's something wrong with both of these stories. Okay. And then there's this this slashing in in uh, in China where a man came into a in an elementary school and slashed and killed 22 children. So you know it's not going to, you know, you can you can uh, ban the guns, it doesn't matter, because a determined killer is going to kill anyway, okay? They will find a way, whether it be a bomb or, a, you know, a slashing. And I tell you, over here, we train for that. We do train for slashers because we've had um, a couple of cases. One was in Osaka a couple of years ago where a man came in through you know, a window, an open window during the summertime because, you know, it's hot and they open the windows. 
man came in. He was dressed as a serviceman, I guess. He had a black service wear, you know, repairman clothes on, which you can get at any um, workshop. There's, they, they still have work clothes shops here. And they, I guess the guy purchased, you know, a suit that looked like a, you know, repairman. So nobody really, you know, they thought he was just trying to fix something outside. And he crawled in the window and he slashed and killed eight kindergartners. Well, not kindergartners, but they're first graders. Yeah, he killed eight of them in Osaka. So, you know, <clears throat> even if you, you know, ban all the guns, a determined killer is going to kill, okay? So, over here we have drills where um, we call the, the police. The, the police help the local schools and they, they have a person dress up as a perp, right? And the perp chooses a different room every year and they storm into that room and our job, you know, and they're dressed up, they have mask on and glasses and they're wielding a knife, right? And of course it's a fake knife, but still, they come in and they're shouting and yelling and screaming and the kids are scared, you know, and they're, you know, they're shouting, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you like that. And that's what they do every year. It, it was pretty scary the first time they did it. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I just heard somebody yelling, you know, yelling and I saw them coming down the hall and we we're all just as supposed to, you know, barricade in our classrooms and get the kids out to the balcony and then they go down the fire chute, you know. But anyway, um, this year they had it in my classroom, in the English room, and they didn't tell me, you know. So um, I had the homeroom teacher in there with me, and I led the kids out while he battled the perp, okay. But by this time I knew it wasn't a real perp, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to use desks and chairs, you know, especially in the English room where there aren't very many chairs. In fact, there's just my chair and, like, a few small desks. That's it, okay. There, there aren't... A lot of things to defend yourself with. I mean, <laughs> a lot of things to throw at a perp, you know, in the English room. But anyway, we do that, and we have this uh, this like prong thing that goes like this. It's like the size. It's like it's quite big, you know. It's about this big, and it has a long stick on there. And you're trained to use that to pin someone against the wall. They're in every classroom. I have one in my classroom as well. And we pin a perp against the wall, or you can bring it between their legs and pull out from underneath. You can pull their um, legs out from underneath them and stuff, and you can hit them with it. We also have a long stick, long hard stick, that's in every classroom, it's a, it's a kendo stick. We also have a uh, net, a, a net that you wrap them in, and we also have um, and like an alarm in every classroom that you pull, you pull the string and it goes off. And all teachers are supposed to wear whistles, that's why if you see me every once in a while you'll see me with a whistle on in one of my things, because we're supposed to wear whistles. Okay, and um, yeah, we do learn uh, simple self-defense things, okay, so that we're not totally defenseless and that we can, you know, protect the children while we, you know, battle the perp, okay, and we're told to take them down, okay, so anyway, um, with that being said, um, today, this, I was reading Lamentations 3, and it struck me that, again, once again, the Lord wants me to keep on track of these read-alongs because we are where exactly, we're exactly where he wants us to be, where he wants us to hear, because we're dealing with this right now. Okay, so let's find out what Lamentations um, 3 is all about then. Okay, so let's get started. Please open up your Bibles to Lamentations chapter 3. Okay, it says, I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. His wrath being God. Okay, this is Jeremiah lamenting about what happened to Israel. Okay, they're going, they've gone into captivity now. He has led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me he has turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin has he made old. He has broken my bones. He has builded against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He has set me in dark places as they, as they that be dead of old. This kind of like sounds um, almost like Christ speaking here, like being in the grave, you know? So, my flesh and skin has made, he has made old, he has broken my bones. He has builded against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He has set me in dark places as they be uh, dead of old. He has hedged me about and I cannot get out. He has made my chain heavy. Also, when I cry and shout, he, shut, he shuts out my prayer. You know, um, Jesus also said on the cross when he was um, dying, he said, you know, Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me? You know, um, he has enclosed my ways with hewn stone, with hewn stone, cut out stone, <laughs> and he has made my path crooked. So, now I'm not sure if this is, a, you know, like a, a also you know, talking about that, but I, it's Jeremiah talking, but you know, a lot of the things that the prophet said, and a lot of things prophesied earlier, 
it has to do with Jesus Christ in the future, the, the future Messiah, okay? Um, the suffering that he goes through, okay? So he has hedged me about that I cannot get out, and he has made my team. All right, so I gotta go back to verse 10. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in secret places. He has turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. He has made me desolate. He has bent his bow and set, a mark, set me as a mark for the arrow. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. I was a derision to all my people in their song all the day. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drunken with wormwood. He has also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He has covered me with ashes. And thou has removed my soul afar from peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and gall, my soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Okay, so this is the part that the Lord, I think, really, he was telling me, this is what I really want to, the people to hear. Okay, he really wants us to hear this, so please listen carefully. Okay, verse 21, you can highlight it. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. What is he recalling to his mind? Well, let's read on. It is, the, it is of the Lord's mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is faithful even when we are not. We have no right to accuse God of anything. He is not the one that's unfaithful. We are. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. Is the Lord your portion? Have you made him your portion? You need to. Okay? Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. He's good for those who wait. Okay? If you're not waiting for him, then what do you expect? Therefore, you know, so the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. Are you seeking the Lord? It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Let's not be panicking and, and, and you know, um, going crazy and, and talking about conspiracy this and conspiracy that and there's this out there and there's that out there. there yeah we need to be aware of, of a lot of things I mean we need to be aware of things and not be blind and stupid but also we need to you know remember where our focus should be okay we should not be focusing so much on what's going on around us though we should be aware of it we shouldn't be like having our heads in the sand I mean really we need to be aware of what's going on around us, and we need to pray for others. We need to stop being so self-centered, okay? We need, really need to care, because, you know, a lot of people these days, I, I think they're emotionally retarded. I know that's a harsh thing to say, but it's true. If it's not happening to me, I don't give a rip. Even Christians think that way, you know? That's not how the Lord Jesus thinks. If you're a follower, of, a follower of Jesus Christ, don't you think you ought to act more like him and think more like him? Take yourself, you know, we're supposed to pick up our crosses, deny ourselves and pick up our crosses daily. Yet we're so self-centered. We don't think about anybody else's pain. How many are actually out there praying for the victims of Sandy Hook Elementary School? And you say, oh, that's a shame, that's a bad thing. Okay, what's on TV next? I want to watch my favorite show. You know, so we need to be seeking him and putting our eyes on him, not focusing on the, all these sensational things, you know. Okay, um, it is good that a man should both hope quiet, both hope and quietly, quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth, not be lazy, be sitting on the couch being a couch potato, okay. He sits alone and keeps silence because he has he has borne it in upon him. He puts his mouth in the dust. If so, there may be hope. Okay? He gives his cheeks, he gives his cheek to him that smites him. He turns the other cheek. The Lord told us. If somebody smacks you on the cheek, you turn the other, you give him the other one to smack too. Okay? That's how you react. You don't act by, you know, react by, uh, fighting and, 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 and yelling obscenities and, you know, and deleting people and whatnot, you know, you, you give the other cheek, okay? That's what you're supposed to be doing first, okay? Okay? He gives his cheek to him that smites him. He is filled full with reproach, for the Lord will not cast off forever. The Lord will not cast off forever. But though he has ca he caused grief, he, sorry, but though he causes grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly, 
nor grieve the children of men, to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth, to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord's approved not, the Lord approves not. Who is he that says, and it comes to pass, when the Lord commands it not? So who's making all these false prophecies? Oh, I had this vision. Oh, I had that vision of things that are going to happen. And they're not, you know, and the Lord never told him that. Okay? Out of, the, out of the mouth of the Most High proceeds not evil and good. Wherefore doth a man complain? Why does a man complain? A man for the punishment of his sins. If a man is being punished for his sins, if a nation is being punished for their sins, why do we complain? Instead of complaining, maybe we need to get on our faces. You know, and we need to beg for forgiveness. We need to repent and, and turn back to him. It says here, verse 40, Let us search and try our ways. Yes, let us search and try our ways. And turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God and to the heavens. We have transgressed and have rebelled. And thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain. Thou hast not pitied. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayer should not pass through. Thou hast made us the offscouring off, off and the refuse in the midst of the people. All of our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Fear and a snare has come upon us, desolation and destruction. Mine eye run as, runs over with rivers of water. Jeremiah is crying here. And ceases not without any intermission. He's crying for the people. How many of us are crying for each other? Till the Lord looks down and beholds from heaven. Mine eye affects my heart because of the daughters of my city. Mine enemies chase me sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. Waters flowed f over my head and I said, I am cut off. I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. Sometimes, I mean, it hurts so bad that, you know, all we can do is just pant, you know? Though thou drewest near in a, in a day that I called upon thee, thou said, Fear not. Thou said, Fear not. O Lord, thou hast pleaded the cause, causes of my soul, thou hast redeemed my life. O Lord, thou hast seen my wrong, judge thou my cause. Thou hast seen all their vengeance and their imaginations against me. Thou hast heard their reproach, O Lord, and their imaginations against me. The lips of those that rose up against me and their device against me all the day, behold, they're sitting down and they're rising up. I am their music. Render unto them recompense. O Lord, according to the work of their hands, give them a sorrow of heart, thy curse unto them. Persecute and destroy them in anger from a, under the heaven of, heavens of the Lord. Okay, so that concludes um, Lamentations 3. Um, I offer up my prayers and condolences to all the victims, um, families, and um, all the lives that this, these things, you know, these shootings have affected. And... Um, just plead, you know, pray Psalms 91 every day and plead the blood over your children because you never know when it's going to happen to you. You know, um, it saddens me. It saddens me greatly that so many children have lost their lives, so many innocent little children have lost their lives. And in a time like this too, you know, right before Christmas, when everybody is, is, is celebrating, you know, all the gifts the Lord has given us, the family, and, uh, you know, those little, those little faces will not be there to celebrate with their parents. Their parents, instead of celebrating, they're going to be grieving. And my heart grieves with them. And I just ask all of you to, to, to soften your heart and pray for one another, to care about one another, okay? Because it could be, it could be your child, you know? I think about that every day, you know, every time something bad like this happens, I hug my children a little bit tighter. And I thank the Lord that they are given another day of life. We should all be more grateful. You know, I was thinking about, um, I don't make New Year's resolutions normally because I can't keep a lot of them. I just have too many things on. But if I were to make any kind of resolution, I think that uh, I've learned more than anything of these last two years to not take anyone for granted. That every life is precious and you never know, you know, I'll, I'll get back to them later, 
you know, somebody sends you an email, oh, I'll, go, I'll get back to them later. Somebody gives you a phone call, oh, you know, I was busy, I'll get back to them later, and you never do, you know, or you don't, you forget to tell your child that you love them, you know, you, or somebody gets sick in the family and they die and, and you're full of regrets. What kind of life is that, to live full of regrets? Why not live your life using your, using your heart to the fullest? The Lord gave you a heart. Use it. Don't let it grow cold and callous. But use it. My, my uh, resolution really this year is to love people more like Jesus loved us, you know, and to never take anyone for granted, to show them that I love them and that I care. You know, love is going to be my banner. That's the banner that's over me. You know? So I pray that you all really read this chapter and consider what he's, he's telling us here. And with that said, I'm late for work. <laughs> I gotta go. I love you all. I bless you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, goodbye. God bless.